This is Living Power with Dan Hurst. In John chapter 20, uh, you'll notice that I've skipped the resurrection because we just celebrated resurrection and I don't really know that there's a whole lot that we can get into that would be anything particularly new. And so I thought, let's continue on with our, with our study. Because what we're doing now is looking at what happened after the resurrection. And this literally starts on the morning of the resurrection. John chapter 20 begins with what happens on the morning of the resurrection. And so we're going to look at a couple of incidents uh, that I think are not just symbolic, but there's some great truths and great principles in uh, what happened not only to Mary of, of Magdala, but uh, also uh, Thomas. So I want us to take a look at those. And so. Uh, this passage, I'm going to put it on the screen, it's not in your study guide, but it begins with John chapter 20, picking up with verse 11. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb, and as she wept, she stooped to look into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had lain, one at the head, one at the feet. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I don't know where they have laid him. Having said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Oh, isn't that an interesting question from Jesus? You know, who, who are you looking for? That's, and it's Jesus. Come on, that's weird, isn't it? And, uh, and she says, uh, she responds to him, she is, she's supposing him to be the gardener. And she says to him, Sir, if you carried him away, tell me where you've laid him, and I will take him away. And Jesus said to her, Mary, and she turned and said to him in Aramaic, Rabona, which means teacher. And Jesus said to her, Don't cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Now, this is a, a, a there's so much in this particular passage, but... We're, going to, we're just going to key in on, on a few things. But I, I want you to, to really understand and grasp what has happened here. Uh, Mary has gone to the tomb. Actually, she went with, there were a couple of other women that went to the tomb also. But we're, John is just focusing on this particular incident. And they, they saw the angels and the other two women leave. Now, we're not exactly sure why. Maybe they were just running in fear or maybe they were just went to tell everybody you know, what, what had happened. We don't really know. But John keys in on Mary specifically. Uh, so let's take a look at this. Why, why, what was it that John saw in, specifically in Mary's life that happened there at the tomb? First of all, I want you to see uh, why, why, why her name is Mary Magdalene. We call her Mary Magdalene. She was from an area called Magdalene. And I want you to see that on the map. Uh, if you look up, oh, I forgot my little pointer. But if you look up, I can't teach without a pointer when I have a map. Come on. Uh, if you will look up to the Sea of Galilee, uh, which is obviously above the Dead Sea, the River Jordan flows from there, flows down into uh, the Dead Sea. You will see uh, at the on the uh, west side of the Sea of Galilee, the village of of Magdala. It is a very, very small village. We don't really know a whole lot about it. Uh, it has, all through the years, changed names. And today, it's right, right there. <laughs> who has, who did that? How do you do that? Are you doing that there? I didn't know you could do that. <laughs> Is that weird? You could just do that? <laughs> oh, wow, well, right there. That is so cool. I didn't know you could do that. Shipping. 
Uh, all right, that's where that's where uh, Mag Magdala is. That's the, it's on that uh, west side of uh, of the Sea of Galilee. That area is known as the coasts of, of Magdala, and so that's where Mary was from. She had been delivered from demonic possession. Uh, and Luke talks about it in Luke chapter eight. In fact, look at this passage. This is pretty interesting. Uh, soon afterward, talk about Jesus, he went on through cities and villages proclaiming and bringing the good news of the kingdom of God, and the twelve were with him, the disciples were with him, and also some women who had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary, called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out, and Joanna, the wife of Chusa, and Herod's, who was Herod's household manager, and Susanna, and many others who provided for them out of their means. Now, what this verse suggests is that Mary may have been a woman of means. We don't really know, but in any case, she and several other women were regular supporters of Jesus and his ministry. And on that Sunday morning, uh, which was obviously the day after the Sabbath, uh, Mary and, and two other women went to the tomb, most likely to do two things, pay respects, and also, as was the custom, uh, to seal the body with some aromatic spices. Now, they wouldn't have had time to do that uh, because they buried Jesus in haste, if you'll remember, uh, because it was right before the Sabbath. It was called a high Sabbath because the Sabbath actually landed, or a high Passover because it landed, or a high Sabbath because the Passover landed on that particular day. And so it was a very holy day, of, uh, uh, even more so than normal, because it was the Passover and Sabbath at the same time. And so it was called a high holy day. And so they were in a rush to get ready for that, and they hadn't finished probably preparing the body. So they're going back to the tomb to finish that job. They know that there is uh, a stone in front of the, uh, of the tomb uh, because uh, Mary, one of the other women, said, uh, what will we do about that? But that wasn't, uh, they, that wasn't that much of a concern. Apparently, they didn't know that the stone had been sealed. Probably didn't even know that the Roman soldiers were there. Perhaps thought maybe the Roman soldiers could help them. I don't know. But anyway, they go to the tomb. The women are startled uh, to find that the tomb is empty and the guards are gone. I mean, they're, they get there and the place is it's like a graveyard. Uh, uh, there, but there's nobody there. The tomb is empty. And except when they, they, they look in and there are a couple of angels. Well, that will startle you. That will that'll wake you up. Uh, and the angels announce that Jesus is alive, and so the other women run off, either, as I mentioned before, either out of fear or to go share this news. But Mary stays, and she's quite distraught, wondering what all of this means. She just can't quite get her head around what's going on, and she's weeping. She's standing outside the tomb, and she's weeping, and she looks back at the tomb again, just to, you know, it's like, really, is this what's going on? And the angels are, are there. And they say, what, why are you here? You know, I mean, you, you've got something to, to say. You've got something to tell people. Why are you looking for Jesus here? He's not here. And then she turns around and encounters Jesus alive and well. Now, what I'm going to pick up in this passage is that once Mary Magdalene encountered the risen Christ, she was, she was given a new ministry. At that point in her life, she receives a brand new ministry for her life, and it's to testify to his risen presence. On behalf of Dan Hurst and the Open Class, we want to thank you for watching. 